Hi and welcome to my channel. Now today's video is a follow-up as I've got a few bits here to do a little bit of experimenting and uh, some experiments I think you may be uh, interested or may want to have a look at or if uh, you're kind of one of these experimenting people you may just want to have a wander and have a look at my little experiment that I did earlier today. But uh, yes, going back to that fuse video um, I might have ruffled a few feathers uh, got a bit of maybe, uh, what, what should we call the word, bickering or uh, one person's opinion against another's and uh, of course everyone's got different opinions about anything politics anything you can think of there's everyone got a different opinion I'm not saying that uh, my opinion was right at all I've just pretty much given my opinion that I thought maybe 70 pound was going over the top to buy one of them little fuses and that uh, definitely 4,200 pound was definitely going over the top not this year mega money and it pretty much meant nothing to you I just thought that was a bit well a lot of money really well it is for me anyway so um, that was just my personal opinion and a few people come back saying that uh, you know they paid 10 or 20 pound for a fuse and they're, they're not too sure they're sitting on the fence but uh, for that kind of money it wasn't a massive outlay they'd, they'd give it a go kind of thing so that's fair enough it's a bit like um, well maybe not so much but uh, maybe if you've got a car or something like that you're doing it all the way up a bit like your wi-fi you're doing it you know got every single bit all the interconnectors all that kind of stuff and uh, you're going you've got a nice lead and everything and you think with that lead i'd want a nice decent fuse like uh, so maybe you know you've spent 10 or 20 pound fair enough like i say maybe getting that final little mascot a little badge for the car you've got a car you've got it all chrome on it everywhere and everything and you just want to get that last little bit to finish it off the icing on the cake so um, you know uh, fair enough like you know what i mean fair enough but um, I just thought I'd do a little experiment and uh, we're going back to that, um, that fuse and I want to talk a little bit also just a little bit about uh, directional cabling as well because that fuse had a little direction and say it must go this way and not the other way and of course that fuse had nothing in it apart from a piece of wire and that wire is not directional you know it's 100% a piece of wire is not going to be directional not unless it's got something involved in Sono something in between the wire or made up of consistency where um, say a diode where it's, it's going to go in that direction and that wire isn't it's just a piece of wire so the fuse definitely wasn't directional that's for certain um they don't you know they don't make they don't make wire that only goes in one direction it's being ac as well it's got to go in both directions for the circuit to flow so we're going to talk about a uh, directional lead this is a you know per se kind of could call it directional lead here yeah? it looks like just a normal phono lead end-to-end uh, -end. and I'm, if you want to link to that video that I've done on this I'm going to put it up at the top there now me making this lead and I'm going to give you a demonstration of this lead uh, a basic demonstration is going to show you that this should be only wide up in one way and the reason why we'll do that in a minute but um, yeah I just want to come to like you paid that money for the fuse now I was just thinking I was just just, just because we're doing the house up as you know and whatever and go from room 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 to room but so the first thing I did in this room has changed my plug socket and that was a while ago and I didn't really think much else of it because uh, like I say whenever I get a bit of electrical equipment or something like that I usually change the fuse because uh, they usually come sorry not the fuse the actual plug because they come in a bit of a mess they like mainly look green the pins rather than you know a gleaming kind of bronze or gold colour whatever colour you want to call it they look very dirty in that so I'll show you a close up of the pins of this plug here hopefully that's a picture I've got of it there as you can see that's quite dirty when you compare it to a brand new plug so you're going to get a good connection there so i was thinking back there because uh, we changed a few other plug sockets around the house we didn't get the house rewired i mean uh, i think the wiring's okay in the house uh, you know, it may need wire. it's old i mean some people say 30 years old you should get rewired but that's a different kind of subject i just want to go to the actual socket now so uh, just for instance if you just bought this fuse and you've bought everything else and you've got top gear and all that kind of stuff and uh, us iPive people are all about connections, 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 and a tight, solid connection. You know, that's all everyone talks about. It's got to be solid, it's got to be tight. Uh, turn the tone control switch off to make sure it bar pi bypasses that part of the circuit, all that kind of stuff. It's all, you know, a, you know, the signal where everything's got to go from one part to the other with the least amount of interruptions along the way. So that's what it's all about. So I was thinking, I, I took a plug socket out of... Uh, my granddaughter's room that she uses in the house and not say we're, we're, we're replacing every single plug socket anyway so this has been here quite a while this plug socket so this is probably to the extreme i'm going to show you today this is to the extreme now i thought you're plugging all your eye find that and you're probably plugging it in you know some people may still be plugging it into an old socket there rather than a nice gleaming brand new one like that now what kind of difference would that make and i thought it'd be interesting uh, and i thought a way of actually um, trying to show you the difference between this plug socket 
and an old plug socket that you can easily get. You can get an electrician to come around and replace one of these. I would have thought for about £70, somewhere around there, they're going to charge. It's probably you know, a 30 minute job top back for them. Uh, supplying and fitting that probably about 70 quid and it may be well worth your while I'm not saying go and do it but uh, maybe something to think about you make your own mind up when you see the experiment so what's today's experiment well today's experiment is we're going to plug uh, this old plug we're going to use an old plug into an old socket and it's got an old the old fuse in there the fuse is the uh, it's not as gleaming as that should we say it's been in there quite a while on this plug this is a plug I got off of an old receiver that I bought so we could say this is probably 40 years old or something like that. So yours is probably not going to be like that. Yours you know, going to be fairly new. Uh, but then again, you could have bought an old receiver, an old amplifier. And uh, like I say, the best thing, first of all, is to change the plug. But you may want to change that socket on the wall as well, get something to come around. So what we've got here, what experiment am I actually doing to try and show you what's happening? I've got the plug here, and I'm going to show you inside how I've wired that up. I've wired it up to this speak wire. The reason I've done a little bit of wire, I just wanted a little bit of a resistance. I didn't want to short straight across from the live to the neutral. I didn't want to do that. I just wanted a little bit of resistance, so it's a little bit of measurement there. So this here, I think rough, roughly about 0.6 ohms this bit of cable measures, something like that. So it's going into this plug here and it's getting shorted out at the other end is a dead short and it's coming back. So basically it's shorted out across, but just that little bit of resistance of the length of this wire. So we're going to plug it into our socket and we're going to, on the meter, just put that over there a minute. On the meter, I'll just prod this up. On the meter there, we're going to measure the resistance of that wire once we plugged it in. Once we plugged it in, it's gone through them dirty contacts. The fuse, like I say, is an old fuse, and these are dirty inside here as well. So what I'm going to do is just show you a few pictures of another one I took apart. Not this particular one, but another one that had come from another socket in the house. But they're, they're all the same age. Uh, so this is a few pictures there, and as you can see, all the connections are quite grotty inside. You know, kind of grime. Uh, you know, corrosion, all that kind of stuff has built up uh, over time. So, in this little video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally just plug this plug into here, like so, and just measure the resistance. Now, I've done this a few times, so the first video is going to be me doing it first of all, and it's going to be quite a bit sporadic. It's going to be quite, you know, the resistance is going to be bouncing up all over the place. And I'm going to show you a few more, there's a few little clips here, uh, over a period of time. When I say time, I've been going backwards and forwards, taking this plug in and out, in and out, in and out. Like in anything else, if you keep going metal to metal, in and out, in and out, in and out, you're kind of like, how can we put it, filing it, you're kind of just making it a little bit cleaner. You, you know, it's like uh, anything else, like, you know, if you've got uh, on your old amplifier, you, it's a bit noisy, you're on off switch or the volume control, and you turn it off and you give it a little wiggle like that, backwards and forwards, and it kind of clears it a bit. <laughs> clears it up a little bit basically what it's doing the same here so towards the end after quite a few goes of in and out and wiggling you'll see me wiggling it about and you'll see the resistance changing eventually towards the end when i'm doing it it near enough measures correctly so um it's not saying i want you to go and do is go down to your plug socket and uh, start plugging this in, in and out in and out wiggling and all that kind of thing with it turned on or anything like that because uh, you may cause damage so don't do that uh, not so you want to take it into your own hands and think i'm going to give it a go but uh, maybe not advisable but it was okay for me there because i've got nothing connected to the other end it's just an experiment so let's have a little look at that video
So as you can see, the resistance shot up quite drastically early on, and as I more wiggled it about, it got better. And uh, pretty much towards the end, it was pretty much reading what it should do. So I'm um, just trying to demonstrate that these old plug sockets maybe need replacing. I'm not saying you should replace them. That's entirely up to you. And uh, that's the kind of I'm just putting a video out to make your own mind up, really. So the next experiment is with a brand new plug, brand spanking new. This plug is got a brand spanking new fuse in there, and we're going to plug it into a brand spanking new socket. Now. It's a chalk and cheese bit here, got an old plug, old fuse, old socket to a brand new one. Now I could have plugged the old plug into the new one and kind of got an in-between result maybe, something like that. But I didn't do that because um, we want to make a good connection I think. And uh, now I've been mucking about with that plug in there into this socket. I've probably cleaned that plug up a little bit, the pins in there. I'm not going to be able to get that plug into the original state that I had it before. So it may be a bit, bit of a waste of time. So we're just going to go from one extreme to the other. So what we're going to do is put that bit of wire on this plug, like I've done there. As you can see in the picture, I've rewired it up into this plug. You can probably see the uh, bronze of the wire, the copper of the wire, should I say. Uh, that's just to make sure I have plenty of wire in the screw. And you can see it was in there, it weren't just hanging in there. You know, I've given, it's, it's plenty of length, a bit too long. should be wired up a little bit neater than this, but it's still going to do the job for what I want to do today. And uh, all we do is basically is plug it into here. Now I've got a switch on there. As well so that does come into the equation a little bit some people may like that be, this is the only socket I had to be honest with you all the others are actually in the wall um, yeah so some people may not want to switch they want to bypass that they want to get every bit of juice uh, clean as possible from the socket they may want to bypass the switch a bit like that tone defeat on your amplifier so but in this particular occasion we've got a switch so I've had it in the down position obviously in the on position and we're going to wiggle it about we're going to have a look at it and see the difference between a brand new plug and we're going to compare it to the old plug so here we go Okay, so there you go. There's uh, that little experiment with a brand new plug and a brand new socket. And I think that kind of proves that uh, every time I put that plug in, there was a 100% connection there. Uh, there wasn't no dropouts or anything like no resistance build up or anything like that. So it's a nice, clean connection. There's something you may, you know, especially if you paid £70 or more for a fuse and you bought these interconnection cables and all that kind of thing, that you may consider if you've got an old plug socket is to uh, get that removed and put a nice new plug socket in there. In that place uh, to run your iFi off of, uh, like us, I you know, iFi people, us iFi people, we like to make sure that there's you know, a pure connection from one end to the other, nothing's gonna, no switches or anything, no dodgy bits that can kind of cause any uh, any interference, shall we say, in the signal or uh, power or anything like that going to the amplifier or other components. You want it all as clean as best as possible. Okay, going to these connections now, these interconnections or cables that are only one directional, you're only gonna put them in one way apparently. Uh, if it's wired up, uh, in this case, um, say for instance, this is just a normal phone row lead, if it's wired pin to pin, pin to pin, with a cable, no resistors, no capacitors, nothing in, you know, nothing involved, just a clean connection end to end, they're, they're not directional because the actual cable is not gonna be directional. It's, it can go either way, the uh, signal can go either way. So if someone's put an arrow on there, so it can only go this way, and it's wired up, like I say, end to end, nothing in between. Uh, that, that, you know, it's just a bit of a gimmick, really, just to make you think maybe you bought a really special cable there. Um, but if it's like this particular cable here, it has got a difference here. I've got a couple of resistors here, and the way to wind up this cable to do its job, it will work both ways, but to do its job, it should only be put in one direction only. So we could call this a directional cable. This is only going to go in one direction to do its job properly. So what the idea of this cable is, is that uh, if you've bought an old amplifier or receiver and uh, 
you've got a CD player, you'll, you'll see on there there's no, no CD input, it's an auxiliary or tune or something like that you're going to have to use. And, and a lot of these can distort where the CD player is giving out, and these CD players can give out quite a high peak to peak voltage, two or three volts peak to peak. And these amplifiers were really made maybe for one volt peak to peak maximum. As an input, it will make the signal distort it will change that kind of signal as well as I uh, kind of uh, found out on a few of my uh, bits and pieces I reviewed and especially a Pioneer, I think it was 200 receiver or something like that, an, uh, an old Pioneer receiver, it, it, it just sounded terrible until I put this connection here in and it sounded really good after that and I brought it back to how it should sound. So I'm going to show you an experiment here why this should only be wired up in one direction and uh, like I say I've got a video there of me actually making this cable and explaining it more as well with some more measurements and that but so for this particular uh, uh, demo I'm just going to wire up a little battery pack with about 4.17 volts I think comes out of it I'm going to wire it up one way and show you that uh, that voltage gets dropped down just a little if you wire it one way but if you wire it the other way around it drops by about probably a third something like that I think it is or near enough a third so uh, I'm going to show you that little uh, demonstration there just to show you that this particular cable is directional but it's a specially made cable like I say it's got some extra bits in it it's not, just not wire to wire there is other bits and pieces involved so let's have a little look at that video okay now what we've got wired up here we're going to pretend this is our CD player now, this gives out the peak to peak voltages and this is why this is important this lead gets wired up this particular way round. it goes this particular way round. I'm going to show you the other way around as well and you're going to see there is a difference. So this is what you'd call a directional lead where it's got to be put in the right way around in the uh, setup or it's not going to do its job properly. So we're pretending this is a CD player and this is giving out a little bit more than a normal CD player would give out. Let's just measure the voltage on here. So if I just get me a meter on here, that's giving out, I'll get it on there nice and tight, 4.17 volts there, thereabouts. So that's coming off the battery pack there, and we've got it going in here into the black lead here. The black, you've got a black and red, left and right. We've got to go in the black, which is normally the left. So we'll go through the lead and come out this other black terminal. I've got this here just as a, this is quite soft, so it's something hard to push against. So let's measure the voltage coming off here. Get these nice and tight. A bit awkward here with the camera in the way, but as you can see, that knocks that down to about 1.69 volts going that way round in the circuit. So what we're going to do now, we're going to wire this lead, exactly the same two connections, but the other way round, we're going to have this here with a 4.17 volts going into. So if I do that, if I take it off this here, like so, and put it onto this, like so, make sure I don't short it out, because they're very, very close using these crocodile clips. In fact, let's do the positive first. It may be easier. So if we take it off of here, get the middle connection to positive, and hopefully that may just help this a little bit. Just going to try and sneak that on there so it don't short out. And we're just going to check that it hasn't shorted. We should be still getting our 4.17 volts off the battery. And uh, for some reason I've wired this up long enough. There you go. I pulled the wrong lead off. There you go. Let's plug that back in the battery. So it's going there to the positive and that one's going to the negative. So let's just make sure that battery's giving 4.17 volts. So we're going to go onto this connection here, hopefully you can see it, and that one there, 4.17 as you can see. So it's wide up the other way around now, going to lead this way around. So what we're going to do, this is the negative again, oh, sorry, the uh, black, the uh, left channel, so here's the left channel here. So we're going to go back to this here. We're going to try and grab this, let's bring it upwards up here, so I can get a good, and there you go, see it's, it's just dropped to 4.13 volts so that's it going the opposite way round and that lead so before it was going this way dropped it down to I think 1.69 was it but this way it only drops it down just fractionally so as you can see if that was our CD player we'd be getting too much output here wiring it up this way round so this lead has got to be wired up that way round from the CD player to the amplifier it's got to go that way and not the other way for it to work correctly so hopefully that's uh, shown you uh, the difference in this what we would call maybe a directional lead. So there you go, uh, hopefully it wasn't too long of a video, I think one comment I did get, and I do leave most of the comments up there, not unless it's really vile and really tasteless, because like I say, everyone's got their own opinion, someone I think did say that uh, you could have told us all about that fuse in about 10 seconds rather than 12 minutes, but uh, you know what I'm pretty much like, and you can always skip past all the bits you don't want to listen to anyway. 
which is most of it. Uh, okay, so that's it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that little bit of experimenting and uh, come to some conclusion yourself. Any thoughts, obviously put down in the comments. And uh, until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching.